In a previous video, we looked at what happens when s orbitals overlap. In this video, we're going to take a look at what happens with p-shaped orbitals. To review, which of the following atoms have valence p orbitals? To be clear, every atom can have an electron with a p-shaped electron wave, even something like hydrogen whose ground state electron is 1s. You would just need to excite the 1s electron to an excited state like 2p or 3p to get a p-shaped electron. Atoms like aluminum and fluorine have p electrons, but any atom in the second period or lower will have valence p orbitals. Even though lithium's ground state is 1s2, 2s2, there are still valence 2p orbitals because all orbitals with the same principal quantum number n are roughly the same energy. How many valence p orbitals does lithium have? That's right, lithium will have three valence 2p orbitals, 2px, 2py, and 2pz. Let's take a look at them. As you see, a 2p orbital is shaped like a dumbbell or a peanut. If we consider a three-dimensional axis diagram, we can see that a p orbital can fall along an x-axis, 2px, y-axis, 2py, or z-axis, 2pz. While each of these orientations is positioned differently in space, each of them has the same energy and properties, they just have different orientations. All three of these orbitals exist even if no electron is actually that shape and energy right now. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at what happens when two px orbitals overlap. The 2px orientation falls along the x-axis, so when we draw our two atoms, each with its 2px, we draw the 2px orbitals horizontally, along the x-axis. That means that when two atoms start coming closer together, the 2px orbitals overlap head-on. Recall that when any two waves overlap, they can overlap in phase or out of phase. Which of the following sketches depicts the result of the in-phase overlap of the two 2px orbitals? When two in-phase 2px orbitals combine, there's constructive interference, and they form a shape that kind of looks like a piece of candy. Notice that there are two nuclei, one from each atom, and we know that the two nuclei will never touch. They're both positively charged, so they repel each other and stay at a distance. As a result, only part of the 2px orbitals overlap, and those areas grow in size. But what should we call this new molecular orbital? That's right, this is a sigma orbital, like we saw with the two overlapping 1s orbitals, any molecular wave that has cylindrical symmetry, like this, is called sigma. Let's call it sigma 2p, since it's made from two 2px orbitals. Now, when 2px orbitals overlap out of phase, they interfere destructively. Similarly to 1s atomic orbitals, when the two 2px orbitals overlap out of phase, the destructive interference results in a nodal plane. Here are two out of phase 2px orbitals on the x axis. How do you predict the molecular orbital will look after these two out of phase 2px atomic orbitals overlap? Remember, these two orbitals can only get so close. The two nuclei repelling them will stop at a certain point. But when these two lobes overlap out of phase like this, we get destructive interference. So the wave density at this place of overlap shrinks and a nodal plane will have formed. But what should we call this new molecular orbital? That's right, this is still a sigma orbital because of its cylindrical symmetry but the nodal plane between the nuclei means that it's anti-bonding, so we add a star. So the molecular orbital formed when two outer phase 2px orbitals overlap is called sigma star 2p. Now that we've discussed how sigma 2p and sigma star 2p molecular orbitals form, let's talk about the energy of these molecular orbitals. How do you think the energies of sigma 2p and sigma star 2p compare? Right, sigma star 2p is higher in energy than sigma 2p. Recall from prior videos the relationship between wavelength and energy. A shorter wavelength is higher in energy, and the longer wavelength is lower in energy relative to the 2px atomic orbital. Since sigma star 2p has a shorter wavelength than sigma 2p, sigma star 2p is higher in energy than sigma 2p. Finally, remember the rule that we discussed previously for atomic orbitals that overlap to become molecular orbitals. Both types of overlap happen simultaneously. So our two 2px orbitals will overlap and give us two MOs, sigma 2p and sigma star 2p. Let's review a few key points we learned in this video. 2px is an atomic orbital that falls along the x-axis. Sigma 2p is formed when two in-phase 2px orbitals from neighboring atoms interact, and the sigma 2p molecular orbital is lower in energy than the atomic 2px orbital. Sigma star 2p is formed when two out-of-phase 2px orbitals interact, and sigma star 2p is higher in energy than the 2px atomic orbitals. When two atoms approach each other, each with its 2px valence orbital, the atomic orbitals will overlap, 
both in phase and out of phase to give both molecular orbitals, sigma 2p and sigma star 2p. Finally, remember that just because an atom doesn't have a 2px electron doesn't mean it doesn't have a 2px orbital. Orbitals represent the possible wave energies, shapes, and orientations that electrons can be. Just like this and this are both possible states that a jump rope can be, even when it's lying all by itself on the ground.